Hey, you want war? How you gonna be for you ain't got funds? Better gain the whole click. What's the hell, gang? So we back with another vet, man. Class and session. Now, look, y'all check how we coming through, bro. If y'all ain't hop in the community tab, bro, then I feel sorry for y'all, bro. I told y'all the boys, man, say, bro, y'all drop some documentaries, bro, so we can rack out to, bro. And a lot of y'all requested on um, No Limit Chicago Deadliest Game, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all know I got to hop on that first, bro, because this one right here, it was highly requested. So, I'm here, brother. You feel me? What I need y'all to do, bro, I don't want to ask y'all the boys this, bro. I don't ask y'all this at all, bro. Y'all the boys, man, hit the like button, subscribe button when y'all come tap on that, bro. Leave a like button, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't ask y'all that. I'm not like the average YouTuber, bro. I don't ask for like buttons. I don't ask the subscribe button and like that. I don't ask y'all to hit none of that shit, bro, because I feel like you're just going to come rock out with that game, but you're going to come fuck with me on the strength. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to ask no, come subscribe to the channel. I'm not with all that shit, but I'm asking y'all today. Nigga, hit the like button, subscribe button. Class is in session. I'm not about to hold y'all, bro. This, this video, bro, is literally like three hours long, son. So we're going to break this bitch down by part by part. We not about to see if a three hours student rack out to the video, bro. My ass gonna start hating. My ass gonna start hurting on this chuck. We not about to do that, gang. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it popping. Let's see what the fuck going on. Seem like a feud over nothing. O Block and the war on Chicago South Side tends to attract the main focus of coverage about Chicago drill and street goings on. But Chicago is a big city with talented rappers and fearsome gangbangers hidden away in every corner and pocket. So today we're going to head east and look at a slightly less famous but equally, if not more, bloody war taking place in another part of Chicago that has had an enormous impact on the gangster rap and drill music scene coming out of the city. This is an area that has been so dangerous for decades now that the locals have nicknamed it Terror Town. And this is also an area that has spawned another one of the most famous rappers in Chicago drill history, G Herbo. Over the course of his career, G Herbo went from being shot at on the Terror Town blocks to touring the country and taking in millions of dollars. But that come up wasn't easy. Herbo grew up witnessing decades of danger and violence on his block, with many of his childhood friends losing their lives in front of his very eyes. Fortunately for G Herbo, he was able to put the pain that he witnessed and experienced in the streets into his art and his music, with his subsequent success taking him far away from the Terror Town blocks that terrorized him and his friends most of their childhood. I mean, it's no wonder that his biggest charting album is titled PTSD, but sadly, getting away isn't easy and many of his friends wouldn't be so lucky. And while G Herbo was living at large, traveling on private planes, the war was still going on back at home. Year after year, bodies would continue dropping and some of Herbo's friends would be wondering why he was so lucky and not them. This is a story of betrayal, brutality, but most importantly, brotherhood. With the gang that Herbo and his crew grew up representing going by NLMB, which on the street stands for the No Limit Muskegon Boys, but to fans of Herbo's music, NLMB stands for Never Leave My Brothers. So today, we'll be taking a closer look at one of Chicago's most dangerous blocks, where dozens of men get left behind to die and only a lucky few make it out alive. Do you drive for work? Every 1,000 miles you drive for work is worth up to $545 in reimbursements or tax deductions. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it done. Chicago drill music and the gangs that young Chicago rappers affiliate themselves with tend to have long and storied histories. The Black Disciples and the Gangster Disciples that the likes of King Von and FBG Duck belonged to respectively also had a long history themselves. The BDs and the GDs folklore dates all the way back to the 60s when the likes of Larry Hoover and David Barksdale fought for influence over the city's drug trade and thousands of young men looking for guidance in the most troubled areas of Chicago and unfortunately leaving countless bodies in their wake. But when it comes to today's Eastside-based No Limit gang, the modern-day rappers and gangsters that rep No Limit actually descended from another Chicago street gang with a very long and complicated history too. In this case, it's the Black Pea Stones. In the 60s, the biggest, baddest gang of all was the Blackstone Rangers. One of its organizers was a skinny kid from Aberdeen, Mississippi, an unlikely-looking leader by the name of Jeff Ford. Originally known as the Blackstone Rangers, this was a street gang formed by young black men who lived around 66th Place and Blackstone Avenue in Chicago's South Side. This crew was apparently formed all the way back in 1959 at the St. Charles Institution for Troubled Youth by Eugene the Bull Hairston and Jeff the Angel Fort. And like many of the famous street gangs that we know today, the Blackstone Rangers originally formed to protect its members from the danger of the many other street gangs that were emerging in the streets of Chicago around the time. Racial change, economic change, cultural change, they grew out of that uh, 
turmoil. One particular rival that the Blackstone Rangers had formed to protect themselves against were the Devil's Disciples from nearby Kenwood, not to be confused with the biker gang of the same name. Back and forth street battles between these two crews persisted throughout the 60s, by which point an estimated 200 people had joined the Blackstone Rangers, giving not only the rival gang something to worry about, but also the local police. Had you as a police officer ever seen anything like that before? No. Never. Eugene Hairston was the founder and leader of the Blackstone Rangers, going by the nickname Bull, with Jeff Fort his vice president and second in command, with him going by the moniker's Black Prince or Angel, the latter apparently coming from his gift for diplomacy and an ability to help squash conflicts between the Rangers and other gangs. In fact, unlike the modern day gangs of Chicago, who seem primarily concerned with settling scores and murdering rivals, back then Jeff Fort's talent for diplomacy were deployed in an effort to prevent the Blackstone Rangers from going to war and killing other gangs, with Jeff Fort instead attempting to forge alliances between these small and fractured street crews. Right, and he was very... They need more niggas like that, bro. You feel me? Because I feel like this, bro. They don't got no, like, it, like, bro, these niggas don't fuck the game, bro. It, it, ain't, it, it ain't no rules in this shit no more, bro. It ain't no rules in this shit no more. These niggas killing babies, old people. They just killing that, like, they don't give a fuck, bro. It ain't no rules in, it ain't no rules in this shit no more, bro. You know what I'm saying? These young niggas done fuck the game up. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't gonna lie. They need more niggas like him around, son. No cap successful at this, eventually forming a sprawling alliance or nation of gangs, counting a total membership in 1969 to be as many as 8,000 members, and forming a council of numerous gangs aiming to control the city going by the title The Main 21. 21 gangs would join under the umbrella of the Blackstone Rangers. There would be a ruling council called The Main 21 and a new gang name, the Black P Stone Nation. Some would argue the P stood for power. The nation was 4,000 strong. There were some struggles over leadership, but in the end, it was Jeff Fort who emerged as the man in charge. All the gangs were united under the banner of the Black Pea Stone Nation, or BPSN. Each gang in the nation were considered a brick in the pyramid, hence their infamous logo. And for a period starting in the late 60s, the organization actually gained political legitimacy, famously working with a local community association that had been given a million dollar grant, developing a program that aimed to get members of the Blackstone Rangers and the Devil's Disciples into honest work and employment programs. During this time publicly, the Black Pea Stones were beginning to look a lot more like a group of community activists than an active street gang. For example, some in politics around this time had praised the Peace Stones for having played a role in preventing violent reprisals from the black community in the wake of the Martin Luther King assassination. This had politicians at the time praising Jeff Fort for his successful gang diplomacy, with Fort even being invited to President Nixon's inauguration, leading many to believe that Jeff Fort might just have a bright future in politics. But under the surface, things were perhaps slightly more sinister. It was said that during this period, Black Peace Stones had been shaking down local store owners for protection money in exchange for preventing violence following the Martin Luther King assassination, with critics of the Black Peace Stones describing them more as a mafiosa-style protection racket than group of community activists. And from here, soon cracks would begin to emerge in the public persona of the Black Peace Stones. On the streets, they were at war with the Disciple Nation and Gangster Nation that would later merge into the Black and Gangster Disciple Gangs, made famous in modern day drill music. In fact, as a result of this violent conflict playing out on the streets, eventually the Black Peace Stones leader and founder Eugene Bull Hairston would arrange an assassination attempt on Black Disciples founder David Barksdale, aka King David, in 1968. The shooting of King David would be carried out by a group of 14-year-old Peace Stone members who would attempt to assassinate David Barksdale armed with M14 rifles in a contract killing being paid only a sum of one dollar each. Fuck? King David would initially Yo, survive- Hit for one dollar, man. What man? Hold on, bro. Man, hold on, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That man, that what, the, that what the fuck these gang niggas doing, bro? You know what I'm saying? Me personally, bro, I'm not with all the gang shit, but I feel like, and this no, this this no disrespect to none of the gang members, but niggas that gang bang and shit like that, bro. But I feel like niggas that gang bang, but I feel like niggas that gang bang coward, bro. Why, why, why you need a, why, why y'all need a group of niggas to, to do some, uh, be on your side, like y'all need protection or something like that, bro? I feel like, bro, as you being a man, this a human being, like, you know what I'm saying? Especially a man, you know what I'm saying? I can't really say nothing about a woman because a woman need a man protection type of shit, you feel me? But for niggas that join gangs and shit, bro, like, nah, that shit weak to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit weak to me, bro. That's all I'm gonna say, that shit weak to me, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but let's, 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 keep, let's keep tapping on it, bro. I don't want to waste your time. This assassination attempt, but unfortunately his gunshot injuries would later claim his life around six years That's after crazy. the shoot. It quit working. I was doing shooting. Eventually, the authorities would crack down on the Black Peace Stones as a political organization, prosecuting Jeff Fort himself for misusing federal funds in connection to the job training program made possible by the city's million dollar grant. This was a move which some considered simply a right wing attack on Black Chicago's attempt to bring about legitimate change through politics. But we were trying to do something uh, about a situation that was. Uh, literally uh, destroying this community. With many pointing out that only a fraction of that million dollar grant ended up in the hands of the Peace Stones, but that simply didn't matter when the headlines read, gang leader steals one million dollars from the US government. Jeff Fort would later be found guilty of conspiring to misapply federal funds, being sentenced to five years in prison. During his time in jail, Jeff Fort would convert to Islam, more specifically, the black Muslim organization, the Moorish Science Temple of America. And upon being freed in 1976, Fort would form the El Rukh tribe of the Moorish Science Temple, with El Rukan translating to The Pillar in Arabic. And coming up with a new nickname, swapping out the formerly diplomatic title of the Angel, now referring to himself as Chief Malik, or The Ruler. And in the process of establishing his new religious organization, Jeff Fort also purchased an old vacant movie theater called The Oakwood on the corner of 39th and Drexel. This would become the legitimate headquarters for the El Rukan, and the religious transformation of the Black Peace Stones was presented to the public as a positive change for the group. However, local authorities thought otherwise, insisting that Jeff Fort's new religious organization was simply a front for a large drug dealing operation that would operate throughout Chicago through the 70s and 80s. And during this time, Jeff Fort organized yet another alliance of gangs in the city and prisons known as the People Nation, bringing the likes of the former Black Peace Stones, the Latin Kings, Mickey Cobras, Vice Lords, and other gangs all together under the banner of the People Nation. I mean, despite the negativity that he brought to his community, you do really have to admire the vision that Jeff Fort had to try and bring this many people together in his community. And perhaps people were truly right when they said he had a lot of potential in real politics. But the reality was Jeff Fort was playing with fire and eventually the authorities would crack down on his operation. A 1983 drug bust in connection to a large shipment of drugs in Mississippi earned Jeff Fort a 13 year sentence for narcotics trafficking. But from here, even in prison, it would appear as if Jeff Fort kept a tight grip on the large organization of gangs that he had built up in the streets of Chicago. And this meant that even behind bars, bloodshed would continue to play out on Chicago's streets. For example, in September 1988, the original founder of the Blackstone Nations, Eugene Bull Hairston, would be killed execution style, with authorities certain that it was Jeff Fort that had handed down the orders from prison. But even more shocking than the allegations of drug trafficking and murder for hire were earlier accusations leveled at Jeff Fort relating to terrorism and linking him to Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Apparently over the course of several phone calls made to his troops from jail, Jeff Fort instructed members of his organization to meet officials from Libya in what was originally proposed as a pilgrimage to Mecca and the Middle East was later exposed as an attempt to make a multi-million dollar deal with Middle Eastern terrorists. As apparently Jeff Fort had directed El Rukan members to meet with Libyans in Panama City and brokering a deal to receive two and a half million dollars and a large cache of high powered weaponry in exchange for a commitment to wage war on the local authorities in the United Man, States. Lie, boy. That boy Jeff Fort, that boy's a hell of a nigga bro. Man, that boy got pulled, you know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know, man, what the, is he dead? He, he dead in our times, bro? Like, y'all let me know what the fuck going on, man. But that boy's a hell of a nigga, bro. That boy's a hell of a nigga, bro. In what was described as Operation Ruck Bomb, a court was later told that Jeff Fort's religion organization slash gang had made an agreement with a foreign government to commit terrorist acts in the United States on their behalf in exchange for a two and a half million dollar bag. Honestly, this is one of the most outrageous and shocking accusations that has ever been leveled at a gang leader in the United States uh, yeah. history. Fort would be found guilty of these accusations and ultimately given a hefty 80 year oh, yeah. prison sentence. Yeah. Jeff Fort is still alive to this day, serving out that sentence at the ADX Florence Ooh, Supermax Prison. That boy, that's my question right there. Ooh, that boy about 80 years. Ooh, that boy. Ooh. He gotta be like, he gotta be in his late 70s or something. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That, he, he gonna die in that bitch, bro. He gonna die in that bitch, you know what I'm saying? He gonna die in jail, bro. He gonna die in that bitch, brother. Nigga get this man, nigga get this man a whole football, football jersey. Number. Nigga get this man 80 years, bro. You know what I'm saying? They had, to, they had to get him off the streets, bro. ASAP, you know what I'm saying? The brother had pulled like a motherfucker, bro. 
of America's most secure and brutal prison That's facilities. Crazy. Jeff Fort's family still fight for his release to this day, but just considering the insane amount of danger and terror he was able to inflict on the Chicago community, and considering what he and his organization were attempting to do in cooperation with a foreign government, it's very hard to believe that his okay, release will be coming what? anytime soon. The history of Jeff Fort and the Black Peace Stones continue to cast a dark shadow over Chicago communities mm. to this day, as the next generation of children of Peace Stone and affiliated gang members would move around Chicago and grow up. The identity of the Black Peace yeah, Stones would be part. Y'all, let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section. But we gonna leave this bitch to to be continued. Now I'm saying, if y'all want part two, man, y'all let me know in the comment section. But we most definitely gonna chop on it. Only if y'all want part two, like I said. But if video three hours long, bro, I'm not about to sit in this chair on my ass three hours, bro. I'm sorry, bro. You know what I'm saying? Next time, I'm gonna shoot you in the one that wink and not the one that stink. I'll be back to your ass. Got us some double D, big titties on that shit. I know she really like that. Spit again, a whole click, but a nigga really cut them. See you on wall, how you gon' be for you ain't got funds. Spit again, a whole click, my nigga lives anything. Chain hanging to the floor.